Hi everyone and welcome to this new video in which I'm going to talk about a common mistake that some students, especially beginners, do, which is thinking of intervals when actually approaching your training from a solfege perspective. Just so you better understand what I'm talking about, I'm referring to the activity, the thought process of thinking of intervals, so trying to identify intervals or recall intervals also when and approaching an your training task, whether it's melodic dictation or sight singing or whatever, from a solfege perspective. So using solfege or using movable dough. This is a sneaky mistake that I'm seeing some students make without being aware of the issues that may arise from mixing interval thinking with solfege movable dough thinking. I'm going to discuss this in detail in a minute. Before going ahead, I just invite you to check out our free workshop if you haven't yet you can click the link down below and have access to this three hour long training that's full of valuable content if you are interested in your training it explains all the main scientific findings related to our perception of musical pitch it explains what to do based on those findings and what not to do so what exercises to avoid what thought process you should adopt in the most important your training tasks such as melodic dictation and chord recognition it includes real exercises that you're going to practice while watching the workshop and more specifically it will help you understand what's your current level and what you should do from a your training perspective in order to improve from there. All of the concepts and exercises that you're going to find there are taken from the use your ear method which is a science-based step-by-step approach to your training that will help anybody no matter their age or current level to start from scratch and develop advanced ear training skills. So if you're interested in that, click the link below to watch the workshop. You can also check out our website if you want, where you will find our courses and other services that we provide to help you develop your, your training skills more effectively. You're going to find the link to our website in the description section below. Okay, back to the main topic of this video. Let's talk about why mixing up interval-based thinking with movable dough or solfege kind of thinking. It's really a mistake and it will cause issues and problems along the way. Basically, as you know, I've already explained many times on this channel why interval-based thinking is problematic. It creates a lot of issues. It causes a lot of students to get stuck unnecessarily and it causes a general inability to develop our sense of musicality. You can check out this video up here where I show all the scientific studies that backs this up. You will also find the links to the real scientific papers in the description section of that video. That being said, knowing that interval-based thinking is ineffective, it's of course obvious why mixing up interval-based thinking with movable dough thinking or solfege-based thinking is a mistake and causes issues. But it's important for me to clarify what's the difference, the real difference between interval-based thinking and solfege-based thinking or movable dough. Kind of thinking because I see there are a lot of people that think that oh solfege movable dough is the same as intervals no it's not it's they are completely opposite things and uh, of course this is hard to understand because you don't clearly see the thought process so if anyone ever explain this to you, you can have a hard time understanding and figure out what's the real difference between interval-based thinking and solfege-based thinking, or let's say a tonal way of thinking. Interval-based thinking is completely atonal. So you just recall intervals or you try to recognize intervals, like one interval at a time. So you don't think about the tonality. You don't think about, oh, what's the key? What's the tonic of this? piece of music that I'm trying to recognize or that I'm trying to sight sing. You don't care about this stuff when you're thinking in interval terms. You just care about, okay, I'm on this note and I have to sing this note or I have to recognize how distant is this note from this other note. So one of the main problems that arises when musicians think in interval terms is that they don't have a framework of reference where they can work in. They are just going one interval at a time without 
without having an idea of the general harmonic structure that's behind the piece of music they are working on. And this is a big issue because the harmonic structure, it's a guideline for you to really limit the options available. So if I know that we are in the key of C major, okay, and I'm hearing uh, two notes, and I feel that these two notes are still in the key of C major, they are not going out of key, I know that these two notes are basically within the seven notes that are included in the key of C major. Whereas when you adopt an interval based approach, you don't have this. They can be all the 12 notes available in, in the Western music system. So you understand how this is more complicated just because there are a lot more options to choose from, right? And this is just one issue. Another big issue related to thinking in interval terms is the fact that like on a thought level, the thought process that most musicians adopt in, in this case when thinking of interval is, okay, let me, what does this interval reminds me of? So uh, what's the association that pops up in my head when I hear this interval? It might be the beginning of a melody or a part of a melody that you know or whatever. The important thing to understand is that whatever association you form, when you try to recall that association, so let's say you're trying to identify a major third interval and you think of a particular melody that has the major third interval in it, you're actually recalling also the harmonic context in which that melody was played in. So you're not recalling the isolated intervals. You're actually recalling, and this is due to how our brain works, it's inevitable that you recall also the harmonic context that was behind the melody or whatever musical element you're trying to recall. So to make it short, you're recalling, let's say, a perfect fourth, okay? And you know that uh, Wagner's Wedding March has the perfect fourth at the beginning of the melody. You're not not only recalling the perfect fourth, you're recalling a very specific perfect fourth, which is fifth degree of the key that goes on first degree of the key, okay? This means that, for example, let's say that you are sight singing a piece of music and there was a perfect fourth, a sanding perfect fourth to sing, but that perfect fourth was second degree to the fifth degree of the major scale instead of five, one, it was two, five, and you try to recall Wagner's wedding march to do that, you're going to move the second five to being five one, okay? Of course, it's not certain that that is going to happen, but you are making it very easy for it to happen. You're encouraging the shift because by thinking of Wagner's wedding march, you are going to recall the specific harmonic context where the melody was played in. You are not just recalling the interval. That's how our brain works you can't change it. So you are basically going from 2-5 to 5-1 and this is going to mess up everything else. You're going to shift key, you're going to feel the resolution note, the tonic note on the 5 instead of the 1. So as I'm sure you understand, this creates a lot of issues and generally speaking it's not a good approach because it doesn't allow you to really form a mental representation of the tonality and it doesn't allow you to internalize the sonic sensation that notes and chords assume within the tonality. Without having a real intuitive understanding of the feelings that the notes and chords assume within the key, you're always going to take these far too rational and clunky thought processes like interval based one, and you're not going to internalize the patterns that make up music, basically, because music is just a language. It's it has its own patterns, it has its own repetitive movements, and the key to develop your musicality is practicing in a way that allows you to internalize patterns, movements, sensations that then you can recognize in other songs and you can utilize them when composing your own songs, when improvising, etc. Interval-based thinking is far from helping you in this process, and I've just given you some examples 
so you can understand why this is the case. Again, I invite you to check out the video where I talk about the scientific findings. You'll also find the link below to it. And I've just outlined two of the issues that interval-based thinking may cause when performing any ear training task. What you need to understand is that there are several other issues that interval-based thinking might create. This is not a video where I'm going to explain every one of them, but I've created a video where I talk more about it. You will find a link to it up here and in the description section below. So we understood what to avoid, why to avoid it. It's now important to understand how to really think. The best approach you can use in order to accomplish any ear training task, sightseeing, in melodic dictation, chord recognition, whatever, is to always think in a tone way. If you are approaching your training task from a solfege perspective, so using movable dough or using numbers, don't mix it up with interval-based thinking. Just keep thinking in terms of scale and scale degrees, okay? So always refer to the tonic of the key. If you are unsure about what chord, what note, whatever to sing or to recognize, just think of the scale. Hear the scale in your head. Recall the degrees in your mind and sing it in your head. Or you can also sing it out loud if, if the task allows you to do that. It's very, very important that you sing the scale. It's absolutely vital that you orient yourself by thinking of the scale. And it can seem a little detail. It can seem a so small detail and it can seem so similar to thinking of intervals. But it's so different because if you are thinking in terms of scale and scale degrees, you are basically always feeling the gravitational field that is created within the tonality. You are feeling the sensation of each degree. Maybe you don't even realize that, but subconsciously you are grounded in the tonality by the feeling that each scale degree has. You are actually experiencing what I referred to when talking about keys colors. Indeed, this is a very important concept in our ear training method, and I've created a video where I talk about it. You will find a link up here and in the description section below. But the important point I want to make is that when you're actually thinking in scale terms, so scale degrees and thinking of the scale in order to help yourself to accomplish an ear training task, you're actually reinforcing useful patterns that your brain can then reuse to accomplish any other ear training task while remaining grounded in the tonality, while not shifting your mental representation of the key to another key by mistake, okay? As it happens with intervals. So long story short, you are going to learn something that then will become faster and faster and will become more and more intuitive until it's second nature. And you're going to basically hear a note and say, oh, that's the fourth degree of the scale. Oh, that's the sixth. And then, oh, this melody is going six, five, four. And this melody is going two, four, one. In order to achieve this level, you need to go through a scale-based thinking, a tonality based thinking. This is the key that is going to help you a lot with your, your training skills. And it's the main reason why movable dough is a far better approach than an interval based approach. That being said, it's important to understand that, you know, solfege movable dough is not the best method ever. You know, really, it's not even a method if you want to talk about it because it's just a nomenclature system. And of course, it suggests a broad way of thinking, which is, okay, thinking of the scale, and I've just explained why this is very good, but it has a lot of issues too, because it's not a real method. It doesn't really tell you what to do, when to do it, what to do based on your situation, on your issues, on your difficulties, and there are a lot of different issues, and they all vary from a student to another one, so in order to work in the most efficient and best way possible that allows you to not get stuck and frustrated on tasks that are not ideal for your situation is essential to have a good understanding of what are those issues or basically where are you at in the learning process. And then based on this, you can take decisions on what to focus on. So what particular exercise, what tasks to approach and what not to approach because it might be too early for you and you might get only a lot of frustration from practicing it. So really, this is 
what a method does and this is what we do with the use your ear method and unfortunately this is not available in, in Solfege or movable dough because there's not a real method behind movable dough. It's just a nomenclature system. And I've made a specific video where I talk about the difference between use your ear and Solfege. You can check it out if you want. You will find a link to it up here and in the description section below. That being said, I hope this video was kind of clear and if you have some questions you can leave them in the comment section below. You can also ask us whatever question you have about your training and I'll be happy to reply and maybe make a specific video on that topic. Don't forget to check out our website where you will find our free and paid courses and uh, you will find more info about the user ear method and how we can be helpful to you. Lastly, if you're really interested in your training, you shouldn't miss out on our free workshop. It's still available right now. You can register to it by clicking on the link below. It's full of valuable content. It's three hour long. There are exercises and there's a lot, a lot of things that are going to help you in creating your, your training routine based on your current level and based on the scientific findings that really show how our perception of musical pitch works. That being said, it's all for now. I thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.